Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Mona Attar, and I am honored to have been asked to be your MC today as the 2022 recipient of THP Nurse of the Year. Before we get started, a gentle reminder to please keep your mask on at all time during the event. Photos are allowed, but please make sure you only capture those who wish to have their photo taken and not to have any patient or visitors in the backgrounds. If you, po if you wish to post to social media, we ask you double check who is in the photo and feel free to use hashtag at Lee at THP. Now on to why we're here. I work right here at Credit Valley and I am so excited to have the privilege to be with you today and to have the pleasure to, of introducing a woman who is a remarkable advocate and activist in the same area of nursing I practice in, mental health. Before I officially welcome up Canada's newly appointed Chief Nursing Officer Lee Chapman and our very own Chief Nursing Officer Catherine Hayward Murray, I would like to share a quote that our CEO Carly Farrow shared just last month because it is so perfectly captures not only the work that Lee and Catherine do, but the work of all nurses and healthcare providers. I slept and dreamt that life was a joy. I awoke and saw that life was service. I acted and behold, service was joy. And on that note, it brings me great joy to welcome to this one stage two remarkable women of service, Canada's Chief Nursing Officer, Lee Chapman, and THP Chief Nursing Executive, Catherine Hayward Murray. Oh my gosh, this is just so exciting. <laughs> First of all, as you know, we have not done anything like this for years. How does it feel? Like it just... <laughs> oh my goodness, we've just been through so much just thinking about it. Anyways, we'll talk about that another day. But Lee, we are so excited that you're here today. And I want to go back to that service thing we were just talking about. So great to introduce us, Mona. Thank you. You did an awesome job in your official role as, as Nurse of the Year. Um, we are all in service. Everyone sitting in this room is in service. And I hope you wake up every day and you're so proud of that. Because what you've done for this community in the last couple of years will never be captured. It's really what's in our hearts and what our culture is here at Trillium Health Partners. So congratulations to all of you for the service that you have provided. With that, we're gonna get on to business with Lee here and we're so excited. And I think we're maybe, are we one of the, the first official visits that you've had, Lee? You are the third. Official. We're the third, yes. okay. All right, so not that we're competitive or counting or anything. <laughs> top three, she says, top three. So I've got a couple of things that I have to say here, and then we'll get on to some Q&As. Uh, so first of all, I, I want to recognize, again, everybody that's here today. I'm looking for Carly. I don't know if she's here. Where are you? There you are, Carly, right in front. And I even put my glasses on. So I want to recognize Carly, our, our CEO, um, and so happy that you're here with us. Um, we did see Eric in uh, the ED, and uh, he sends his regards here as well, our Chief of uh, Emergency Department. And I'm not sure, Craig, are you here, Craig Campbell? Nope, not able to make it today. But we've got a whole bunch of other dignitaries. We've got Allison Quigley, and we've got Jackie Rodericks, and a couple of folks that, that are here that, um, that many of you may not know. And I certainly just had the opportunity today to meet Heather Blatchford. Heather is one of our founding chief nurse executives when Queensway and, um, yeah, when Queensway and Mississauga merged. And she's joining us today. And she inspired, and you'll see many of us have our inspired t-shirts on from our nursing advisory council. She inspired her daughter to be a nurse and is one of our comms managers here, Alyssa. So, Welcome here. <clears throat> and of course, very special, and I think special to both of us is um, Lee's mom, 
Corey Chapman, and she's sitting right over there. Good to say hi, Corey. Corey is a nurse and obviously inspired her daughter. Um, and uh, Corey was one of the original directors here at Credit Valley Hospital um, w since way back uh, when the doors opened and Corey and I have worked very closely together for many years and mentored me. So really happy to have you here. And these foundations are so very important to who we are today. With that, I'll give you a little bit about Lee and then we're going to give her a chance to say something. Uh, Lee began her career in the CVH ED as a unit clerk in 1995. She spent eight years with us before continuing on her journey of excellence and leadership. She has a Master's of Science in Clinical Health Sciences and completed her doctoral work at the Lawrence S. Bloomberg Faculty of Nursing at the University of Toronto. Her career spans nearly 20 years and she has held clinical leadership positions in home and community care, research, academic, regulatory and professional practice environments. So welcome, like, welcome here to Trillium Health Partners and our Credit Valley site today, Lee. Thank you so much. So it's just my pleasure to be here. Yeah. So really relaxed, right? I, you know, I've never done this before. <laughs> so like yeah. <laughs> put our put our feet up. Yeah. Um, anything you want to say before we're going to do a Q and A style, and um, and we're going to invite the audience to participate as well, and spend about the next half hour or so doing that. So before we get started, anything that you, just comes to mind after you've been to the ED, you've met with some of your former colleagues that that you'd just like to say at this time. Yeah, I think um, I started my career here at, at Credit Valley before I was a nurse and before I even had an inkling of being a nurse. Uh, I'd finished a four-year ba bachelor's degree in Spanish and anthropology, was really interested in languages and people, but really wanted to travel and do fun things and not at all thinking of a career in healthcare. But these experiences here in a busy, growing emergency department, in fact, at the time, it was the busiest emergency department in Canada. And uh, the, the nurses and the, the staff with whom I worked, I had the privilege and pleasure of working with for eight years. So four years in between degrees and four years during my um, nursing degree were really, really foundational to my career in healthcare. Um, which has spanned the last 19 years. And I think, um, you know, I, I really want to give thanks to all of the staff here for the excellent work. I know it's been ex exceptionally grueling under COVID. Um, and, uh, you know, meeting the needs of the community, a community that is growing, a community whose needs are changing all of the time. Um, you know, you can see that certainly in the emergency department with the number of people lining the hallways, the admitted patients. Um, I, I just think it's really tremendous work, and so I really want to express my gratitude for the care that you've all been providing throughout COVID uh, to present day and beyond um, in caring for Canadians. Thanks, Lee. Um, so a couple of questions I'm going to ask you, and then we'll, we'll turn to the audience. So really basic one right off the top to get us started. When you think of the definition of a nurse or what a nurse is all about, what, what, what would you say? What comes to mind? I mean, I think, I think the, uh, the perception, there's, there's sort of a misperception, I think, around the image of the nurse. So we're sort of hailed as heroes, this sort of angelic caring that we, we do. But really, there's a ton of knowledge and skill that goes into that and, and uh, a lot of you know, in, intense competency that, that underlies all of the, the work that we do. And certainly, nursing is a very holistic uh, profession. I think there's a number of things that nurses do, but there's also a number of things nurses can do in their professional um, lives. And so I, I would say that the, you know, my definition of a nurse is very broad uh, because I had you know, never imagined that as, as a former critical care nurse during SARS, I would be in a position of a federal chief nursing officer role, but I think there's just so many things you can do in nursing and uh, so many ways to influence. To me, nursing at its core is about making a difference and whether you're making a difference in the lives of a patient or family, in a community or population, in a classroom, uh, at, in policy and government, there's, there's so many ways to make a difference and I think that's the, the beauty of nursing. Um, there's, there's just such a, a wide array of things that, that nurses can do and do do. But uh, I think, you know, we need to perhaps do a better job of marketing ourselves uh, to the public in terms of the complexity uh, that we offer in, in terms of, you know, care delivery, but also in terms of analysis and decision making. 
actually, and I think there'll be a question later on too, because our nursing advisory council last week, we're talking just about that very thing and how we market ourselves as, as nurses and how are, we going, how are we going to do that, especially after we've come out of the pandemic and the light that's been shone on the profession. Mm -hmm. um, and, that, and, and walking that balance between the negative media, but also the promotion that we need to do about all of the positive things about, about the profession. Mm -hmm. So in your new role, and I, and I heard you when we were in the Emerge Department saying that it's been 12 years since there was a Chief Nurse for Canada. Mm -hmm. Is that right? 12 That's years? Right. Yeah. So now that it's been reinstated and good, like fantastic, can you tell us a little bit about the role? Sure. So uh, the role, you know, and, and I should, I always start with a caveat that there has been nursing policy work over the last decade that has occurred within Health Canada without, in, in the absence of a chief nursing officer. So certainly that work has continued um, with, you know, it, um, using stakeholders, using nursing uh, advisors in various capacities. Uh, but there's certainly a lot of benefit to being within government and in terms of influencing decision making. So my role is really to represent the government of Canada, both within Canada and internationally for uh, nursing, uh, to represent the nursing profession um, within the government of Canada and to influence decision making within the federal government. Um, so a lot of that is serves a convening function with the uh, provinces and territories because healthcare, as you know, is delivered provincially and territorially, uh, but really there is also a federal role to play in convening um, and coordinating um, work within the provinces and territories and really trying to harmonize processes for nurses across the country. What's been, been your biggest learning so far? Like, what are you most surprised about? Um, I think, to be honest, I, you know, the, the federal government um, it's a very steep learning curve. <laughs> learning, uh, you know, I've done a lot of work that's been government adjacent, working very closely with provincial and municipal governments and even the federal government. Uh, but being within government, there's a whole new way of speaking. And I, that's been something that's been, you know, um, key learning for me because of my interest in languages. The, the way they talk is very different. Um, so, you know, just learning the lexicon, <laughs> I think, has been a steep learning curve. And then understanding as well, um, you know, the federal government does employ a, a number of nurses as well, um, from Corrections, Correctional Services Canada, Veterans Affairs, um, the C Canadian Armed Forces, uh, I'm forgetting some here, uh, but uh, Indigenous Services Canada. So really, you could almost consider the federal government a 14th jurisdiction, 13 provinces and territories plus the federal government. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a, a significant role for the federal government to play in health care. Um, we're going to turn to the audience now, okay. and so we're going to look for our first question. Hi, Lee. Hi. My name is Alicia Lipinski. I'm one of the clinical operations managers. And my question for you is, being newly appointed in the role that has had vacancy over the last few years, how do you plan on changing and improving the nursing profession and how others might view nursing? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, so I think the a key way is to work very closely with the provinces and territories. Um, you know, so some of the folks that I'm meeting with include educators, professional associations, regulatory bodies, but then also it's really important to understand the frontline perspective as well. Um, and I, I hope that having a voice within the federal government will really elevate the profession. I think there's been an, a lot of lobbying for years, both within the Canadian nursing community and the international nursing community for Canada to, to reinstate this role. And the reinstatement has been met with a lot of excitement. So I really hope to capitalize on that because I can only be successful with the support of the nursing community. So um, really, really building relationships, which is really the privilege of this role. <laughs> um, I love it, thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Before we move on to the next question from the audience, could you talk a little bit as you've talked about, you know, the jurisdictions across the country and the relationships, what, what does it look like um, around the relationship that you'll have with the provincial chief nursing executives and knowing that we have a brand new chief nurse executive in the province, Karima, um, who will also be coming out to visit us in, in the next couple of months. Could you talk a little bit about that relationship? Sure. Yeah, so I have met with all of the provincial and territorial uh, counterparts, so the the uh, representatives. Not every province and territory has a chief nursing officer, 
So they sometimes have folks who work in health workforce planning who are sort of policy advisors. Um, but, and, and certainly, I would like for every province and territory to have a chief nursing officer, but um, that's nothing, that's not something that I can influence per se. Um, it really is at the, jur it is at the decision making uh, level of the provinces and territory. But yeah, I've worked very closely with Karima since her appointment, um, which kind of coincided with my, when I started the role. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a key opportunity for Ontario because her role has been elevated to the ADM level. So she's at the associate deputy minister level and has a lot more um, span of control for workforce planning. Um, so I'll be working very closely with Karima and colleagues. Great, that's yeah. great and good yeah. to hear that. Um, maybe we'll go to a second question from, from the audience. Hi there, I'm Terrilyn Harbour. I'm an RN on the clinical informatics team. Uh, my question is, the scope of nursing and the roles of RPN and RNs has changed a fair bit over the years and will continue to change. How are we going to define the scope of practice for nurses going forward? That's a really good question. It's something that actually comes up a lot and scope of practice is actually a, is sort of a regulatory term that we use um, and it is really you know, the, the scope is defined in the Nursing Act, so it is actually defined in provincial um, regulation and legislation. However, it's how it's optimized, is sort of, or how it's, how it's enacted, right, in the clinical environment. And I think what's happened over the years is we've, you know, we changed the level of education in Ontario about 15 years ago for all levels, so for RN, RPN, and nurse practitioner. Um, and over the last 15 years or so, we've also looked at the roles separately. So we've looked at the role of the RPN, looked at the role of the R R RN, and sometimes the role of the NP as well to enhance the scope or optimize the scope. But we haven't ever looked at them all together. <laughs> um, and we also are at a time now, uh, given the shortage of nurses, not only within Canada but internationally, that we need to absolutely be looking at all three all of the three categories in Ontario, all the four categories across the country. Um, and we need to be looking at team-based models of care. So looking at all of the levels of nursing practice to optimize them to absolute full scope um, because there's so much that nurses can do autonomously um, and you know, are, are prohibited because of they, there isn't the enabling legislation or because of particular acts that prohibit that. Um, so I think, you know, looking at, looking at the roles together is, is really important, uh, but also looking at uh, the roles that nurses can play in a team-based environment is, is critical as well. Um, I think we have another question somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Okay, it's working. Um, hi, Lee. My hi. name's Kama, and I'm a director in the clinical systems and informatics team, and I'm also a psychiatric mental health nurse by background, oh, so okay. this is just, um, just a proud moment for me to see. Um, our question our, uh, is, um, how can we use what we've done through the pandemic, this goes back to the conversation before, to showcase who nurses are going forward? Thanks. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question because we were banging pots and pans for nurses, right? And then nurses have also faced a significant amount of abuse and, uh, and violence. Um, and so I think we have these sort of split images of the nurse. I think, um, you know, there were many ways that nurses were really effectively utilized in the pandemic that should be um, showcased. And the exceptional things that nurses had to do, you know, I know we use the word unprecedented a zillion times during, during COVID, but there were really unprecedented situations, you know, doing end of life care alone as a clinician with family by, you know, on iPads. Um, that, is, that is really unheard of. So I think we need to expose some of that vicarious trauma and, and the vulnerability within the profession and then find the strength from that vulnerability. I think um, in some ways nurses, you know, we have lay people who can give vaccinations. So in, in some ways, you know, we underutilize nurses <laughs> during COVID. So there's a lot of, I think, lessons that perhaps with the shortage uh, will come to light, uh, you know, about effective utilization of nurses. Um, so, I, I mean, part of that is, is hearing the stories. And I think, you know, it's very difficult right now in healthcare. And I, you know, acknowledge that many nurses are very burnt out and exhausted. Uh, but it, it really is important to highlight those stories so we can learn from them and move forward as a profession. 
Thanks. I'm going to turn to the rest of the audience. And those questions that you just heard uh, were formulated by our Nursing Advisory Council um, on your behalf. And just opening it up to the rest of the audience, if you've got any questions at all for Lee. Terry. <laughs> <laughs> At THP, <laughs> we have a, a huge focus on creating um, joy and work for our nursing teams and our interprofessional teams. What brings you joy and work, Lee? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> These are really good singers. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I love uh, the relational aspects of nursing care. So, you know, when I am working clinically, I love the relationships. I've, you know, I've been caring for the same population for the last uh, five or so years and so I love I love those relational aspects of care but in terms of how that translates to my role I'm still building relationships and establishing networks and uh, and you know getting to know what is difference in what is different in nursing practice in Nunavut uh, compared to Alberta compared to Quebec um, and I, I think that's really the, the privilege of this role is, is you know, uh, we are one profession and, and really reminding um, all, of, all of the folks with whom I'm meeting that we're, we're much stronger when we think of ourselves as one profession. And uh, that I, I think being able to try to elevate the profession gives me a lot of joy. <laughs> great question, great answer. Um, anybody else have any questions? Oh. Fantastic. Ed, should we go wherever you want to go, Keely? <laughs> Hi there, Lee. Um, Michelle Draper, director with the Mental Health Program. Uh, as the mother of a third year nursing student, because I just think nursing is amazing, and working alongside so many amazing nurses, and we have a lot of new nurses, what would your advice be to the new grad Lee to say, how do I come into this workforce now that you're able to reflect back on an amazing career? Um, I would absolutely, I started nursing during SARS, right? I graduated during SARS and my, my in fact, my final clinical placement was compromised because of SARS because uh, I was working here as a unit clerk and my placement was at uh, uh, Mississauga site and it wasn't, but this was before, <laughs> in the before times. And uh, you couldn't travel from site to site. Uh, that was one of the rules during SARS because of the casualization of the workforce and all, all that we didn't know about SARS. So I think I would definitely say my advice would be to stick with it. This is a very difficult time in healthcare. There's no doubt about that. Many have said that it's the worst they've ever seen in their career, but this is really but a moment in our professional lives and it will get better. Um, and I think, you know, just staying with it, knowing that there's such a wide variety of things that you can do in nursing to make a difference. Um, whether it's policy um, or education or clinical practice, um, you know, there's, or executive leadership, <laughs> uh, that, you know, there's so many things you can do in your nursing career. So to stick with it and know that it, as difficult as it is right now in healthcare, uh, it, you know, it, it really is uh, an inspiring career uh, where you can really touch the lives of people every day. And, uh, and there's, there's so much that you can do in the nursing profession. So. Um, cheers to your daughter and <laughs> keep going. <laughs> Hi, Lee, welcome. Thank you. Uh, my name's Karen Conway. I'm a director within our surgical platform here at Trillium. I'm an occupational therapist by background, and you know, I'm so thrilled for you to be in this role, and certainly really happy for the nursing profession to have you in this role. I'm interested in how you envision working with other allied health disciplines across Canada to, to lift and leverage uh, your role in supporting those other disciplines. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good question because we, you know, the, what is sort of often in the media is the shortage of nurses and doctors, but we know that uh, that is not, the, you know, they're not the only two professions and we do work very closely on, on team-based models and, and really to look at all of the professions. And in fact, 
in some jurisdictions, the crisis of other, other providers, you know, besides nursing and, and physicians are, are much more acute and they are impacting care. So, you know, all of the work that we do, although I am representing nursing at the federal, at the federal level, um, my work is, is still interdisciplinary, just as it is in clinical practice and in all, like in the policy world, it still is interdisciplinary or interprofessional. So certainly working uh, to influence policy for the other professions as well. Great question, great answer. Um, are there any other questions from the audience? Hi, Lee. Hi. So nice to see you. Alison Quigley, Senior Vice President, Inpatient Care Services. And so good to see you, Corey, by the way. <laughs> um, Lee, I'm wondering if you can think about the year 2030 and um, whether you're in the role or whether you've been in it for five years. What can we look forward to you achieving in that time? When you, when you look back, what, what's going to be sort of the, the two or three things that you will give you great pride in and what you've accomplished? Did you say 2030? I did. Okay. <laughs> so I likely won't be in the role at that time unless something drastically changes in Health Canada. It's a two-year appointment with the possibility of renewal. Um, but regardless of where I am in healthcare at that time, I hope that um, we nursing is seen as a profession of choice in supporting our publicly funded health care system, that nurses, um, you know, are, are certainly, the profession is elevated, um, that we perhaps don't have 22 regulatory bodies in 13 jurisdictions in Canada, that we perhaps have less, um, like other federated nations that are similar. We're, you know, in Ontario we have one. Uh, regulatory body for nurses. Other jurisdictions have three, and I think that's very difficult for both domestic and international graduates. Um, and I, I really think that nurses have a huge role to play. Um, you know, we often talk about upstream, downstream uh, issues, uh, but nurses have a huge role to play in sort of the social determinants of health. And a lot of the pressure here that we're seeing in a busy hospital um, could also be alleviated by more supports in, in upstream supports, right? Family, family care, family um, providers, whether that's nurse practitioners, um, you know, uh, community supports, uh, primary care um, supports. Um, I think all of those things are really, really important and that we, you know, Canadians take great pride in our publicly funded healthcare system and uh, really don't care about the provincial and territorial differences. They care that they have access to health care and they care about the outcomes of the care. And uh, so I think that we need to do whatever we can professionally to support, to support our publicly funded system. Any other questions? Ah, Carly. Can't wait to hear this oh, one. Please set it up. <laughs> Are your hands sweating yes. a little bit? <laughs> no, I, I think it's a good one. Note to self, Keely, we need to provide cloths for people. <laughs> um, Lee, so you mentioned social determinants of health, and of course, community focus and health inequity is such a big priority for Trillium because we represent the entirety of a population. And you know, our, I see our chief scientist here. We have expertise in population health. I'm interested in knowing how you see your role playing out as we look at the entire nation and particularly the accountability Health Canada has over Indigenous health. And how are you thinking about your role as it relates to trying to improve Indigenous health uh, during your um, short tenure? We should focus short on that tenure. first. But, yeah, yeah. I, I, um, we have something to say about that. Exactly. Yeah. We, we, we know some people in Ottawa. It seems like yeah. it should be longer. But, but could you speak about uh, how you're seeing Indigenous health? Yeah, it's a, it's, an, it's a really important question. Indigenous Services Canada um, has their own chief nurse, um, and, and they have sort of their own structure, and I'll be working very, very closely uh, with them. But I think, you know, this is a, a role that we all have to play in terms of reconciliation for all Canadians. Uh, this, is, this is something that is not just relegated to Indigenous communities. It's, it's really key for all of us to be thinking about this. And... Uh, you know, I, I think, um, yeah, I, th I think there's something, you know, trauma-informed, anti-oppressive, low-barrier uh, care is really important uh, for our Indigenous, for the Indigenous population as well. And so whatever we can do within traditional health care to make our, um, 
services accessible to the most marginal, uh, marginalized uh, members of society will, will only serve um, you know, every Canadian uh, in a better way. <laughs> uh, so I think you know, if, we're, if we think about um, uh, decolonializing our, our health care uh, delivery, um, I think it, it, will, it will not just serve our Indigenous population, it will serve all of us and towards the goals of reconciliation. Great questions and answers. Anybody else have anything top of mind? Our nurse practitioners have given us a fair amount of questions to ask, but you've actually covered off some in your answers already, and some of them I think we're going to save for Karima because they're more yeah. on the provincial. So I just want our nurse practitioners who are here today to know that we are going to acknowledge your questions at that time. Anybody else before I get into my real zinger ones with her? Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Lee, who's inspired you over your career? You know, we talk a lot um, about the importance, in particular, with our more novice nurses who are coming through, the importance of mentorship and career pathing and feedback and talent management. Yeah. You know, anything that I'm saying right there resonate with you and anybody that you'd like to call out that's been particularly inspirational to you? Mm. Well, I have to say my mom, who's yeah. in the audience. <laughs> Uh, told really gory stories uh, from her times as a scrub nurse in the OR over the dinner table, which I think, you know, really initially deterred me from a career in healthcare, but eventually uh, led me there. Uh, you know, eventually. But I think also it was the emergency nurses that I worked with who, who were really inspirational. You know, I've had many, I've been very lucky over the course of my career to have a lot of mentors. I, and, you know, uh, I had a mentor during my master's, well, my undergraduate degree in nursing and my master's who said, you can do it all at well, at, you, can, you can do it all, you just can't do it all at once. That might have been, Op she might have been qu quoting Oprah. <laughs> but, I, you know, that has sort of stayed with me when you, I, I'm a very curious person and sometimes, you know, set, ridiculous goals. So I think just being mindful that we were able to do what we're, we can do all of the things, we just might not be able to do them all at once. Um, I was fortunate to have a very patient doctoral supervisor who um, stayed with me for the eight years of the PhD, which many would not have. But I, I think also, you know, I, I, I got very involved in harm reduction advocacy and activism. And, uh, you know, never would have thought that I operated a unsanctioned overdose prevention site in a park in a municipal park in Toronto for 11 months and it was really the harm reduction workers and the people who use drugs who were vulnerable and engaged in care and trusted me <laughs> as their provider and they they really uh, have have been um, you know probably the most had the most impact on my career to date because it's been the most meaningful work with the most vulnerable people so awesome that you're, you've been inspired by the patients that you serve. So such a wonderful answer. You know, we're coming to the to the close, so I just want you to know that you don't have to worry too much more. But, you know, in your position of, of chief nurse for the, for the country, words of inspiration for us, advice for us. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would say that uh, nursing is a wonderful career. You're doing amazing work. I, I think sometimes we... We tend to have our head down, we drive to work, park our car, come, you know, pack our lunch, come in, and, and don't actually think that we're making a, lot, a difference in the lives of patients every day, but this is really legacy work that you're doing. You're impacting people's lives every day, and I think that is, you know, there's very few careers like that uh, where you're, you're actually making a difference, touching people's lives every day. And, um, I think I just want to say thank you because it really is important work and I know it's exceptionally difficult um, and it may not get better uh, initially. It may get worse uh, before it gets better with the fall uh, influenza season coming, um, but trust that it will get better eventually and that we're working very hard to make things better for all, uh, all, of, nurse, all of nurses and healthcare and all Canadians. Thanks so much. And before I just move on asking you if you've got any final words before we hand over to Carly, who's going to close us out, I just, 
want to say to you, and actually had said it in the emergency department, so prior to, um, to this uh, segment of, of having Lee with us, we toured the emergency department where Lee started in her career in 1995. Of course, the physical environment looks so different. Uh, but the warmth of the team and the welcome of the team is like no no other and uh, since the doors have opened in 1985. So um, what we did share with Lee at that time when we had the questions in the emergency department is the importance of the bi-directional communication between us and you. And knowing that your success um, is that we can contribute to your success. So like what Carly said, let's see what we can do about that two year that two-year regulation, maybe we can influence that, but, but also please know that the nurses of Trillium Health Partners want to make a difference. We want to make a difference in our community, we want to make a difference in our country, in our province. And so we're here, so please call on us uh, for anything at all. You know, we're willing to step up and, um, and we want you to be successful. So if you need anything from us, just, just let us know. So final words over to you. Well, I would say thank you, and I, I know that I can only be successful in this role with the support of the nursing community, um, and so I will, it, it is actually a shared responsibility for all of us um, to, to really amplify the profession. This is our moment to, to shine out of the, the depths of COVID. Uh, this is really a, an opportunity for, for Canada, I think, um, to you know, elevate the nursing profession uh, and I know that I'm saying that with 60 admitted patients and no bed <laughs> admits in the site, emergency yeah. department. So I know I'm saying that amidst some very, very difficult challenges. But I, I do really think that this is an opportunity for nursing within Canada. And, uh, and there's a lot that we can do, but we need to do it together. And we need to really eliminate the fractures uh, within the profession and, and really think of us think of ourselves as one profession uh, and really, really unite the profession as, as best we can across the country. So thank you. Thank you, Lee. Thanks, everyone. We have a couple of gifts for you before we, <laughs> we bring you up, Carly. So we have a certificate um, that we are very proud at Trillium Health Partners <laughs> around recognition and awards. And this is for Lee Chapman as Canada's Chief Nursing Officer. Oh and, uh, and, and please accept this on, on our behalf. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to ask when you're finished, how, you know, what does your swag look like, paraphernalia that you've collected <laughs> across the country? Ours will be the best, by the way. <laughs> And here, of course, because we don't, we don't want you to get cold, is we've got a nice sweatshirt in here and a journal, because we know how important journaling is, and a nice mug. And I think we've got one other item, too, that somebody, there you go. So we want, would like to, the Nursing Advisory Council would like to present you with an Inspiration Be Inspired t-shirt. So thank you. Yay! <laughs> okay, Carly, over to you to close us in. Maybe I'll move and you can sit here. Practicing getting on and off of stages again. Okay, I'm sitting down here. Lee, um, let me, I, th I think I have three things to say. So first and foremost, um, thank you for being here today. There's nobody like Catherine Hayward Murray who can express the pride we have in somebody who's come from here and achieved so much. And so it's, it's a bit overwhelming, but what I think is um, how important it is for our team to see what kind of impact can be had. So we, our cup runs over with pride for the fact that you've come, come from here, and this is a bit of a small town kind of feel, big, big city hospital. So that's what we're gonna start with, uh, just a deep, deep uh, pride in what you've achieved. Thank you, Patty. Um, second, I want to acknowledge, as, as someone who has just stepped into a CEO role, and appreciating the kind of uncomfortableness that comes with a lot of people watching you communicate all the time, you said something that was really profound. Um, which was um, the strength and vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And I just want to uh, say that I think there's never been a more important time for not only nursing leadership, but very strong 
feminist leadership that calls out that it's okay for us to feel vulnerable and that is actually a point of strength. And so thank you for sharing that. I think we at Trillium Health Partners are 77% female workforce, as is the nursing profession. You're such an important role model for a kind of leading into the future that I think goes beyond nursing. And um, so thank you for that message. Um, and then thirdly, about that two-year term. Um, <laughs> so all joking aside, um, I, I think that uh, the federal government is at a really important time in trying to understand how healthcare in Canada is going to be better for everyone, and we know nursing is the backbone. So thank you for taking on the role of service. I'll end where Catherine started, which um, I started my career in government, and I can say that in addition to the weird lexicon, <laughs> it's, it's tireless work um, at times trying to speak truth to power and trying to change policy. There's never been a more important time to have someone as inspiring as you who has started as a unit clerk and gone into all parts of community health, acute health, and now like big impact. And so um, thank you for your service, Catherine said. We will be here for you, cheering you on, being there in any way we can. And please come back often. <laughs> we will have more t-shirts <laughs> and swag. Awesome. Okay, so thank you, Lee. Thank you very much, thank you. And thanks for everybody coming out today. It is, it is nice to be together, really. We can just hang out here for a bit. Anything else you want to say before we close up? I, I, just to your point around strength from vulnerability, I think that that has been a key learning from, I'm probably quoting Brene Brown, so like, go for it, know, go Oprah, for it. Oprah, Brene Brown here, but um, I think we've jumped to talking about a resilient workforce without actually acknowledging the vulnerability, and I think there, that's where the work is, yeah. in, in acknowledging how difficult it's been, um, and then, you know, emerging from that, but, but unless we actually take a deep dive and look at what has transpired over the last two and a half years, uh, it's it's going to be impossible to move forward in from a position of strength. So, I um, whatever that looks like organizationally, you know. But I think excavating those stories of of trauma uh, that have occurred over COVID is really important. Thank you for that. More to come. Come back and let's talk about that more. <laughs> okay, everybody, have a great afternoon, Catherine. That's no other messages, right? No, just, just to thank. Keely and Warren and everybody who put this together for us today. Thank you so very much. And Farah also, big lead in Thanks, that. Thanks, team. So thank you. Thank you.